Ladies and gentlemen, good evening, and welcome to Late Night Live number 56. 56? Is it 56 today? Or 55? Okay. Oh, this is 55. Sorry. You will notice. What up, Ojo Swinney? What up, Abhijit? Nice to see you this evening, morning, daytime, whatever time it is where you guys are. Uh, you will notice my face cam, I have a shadow today. My face cam is much uh, darker than usual because I have a weird lighting setup because I'll try to turn that up a little bit because I was, or I'm trying to get um, a nice shadow slash camera angle. Oh no! I froze my face cam. Face cam's frozen. Reconnecting face cam. Please stand by, ladies and gentlemen. My apologies. What up, Lurker James? All right. Face cam is back. Let's make face cam lighter. Oh, not that light. Okay, there we go. Face cam is good, not frozen. All right, yeah, you'll notice lighting is very different. Uh, be and camera angle for my top down view, I guess it doesn't really look that different. But you'll see here if I zoom out, you are at an extreme angle to the page so that I can try to. Um, capture some card carving, paper carving, knifemanship, it's called. Uh, a little nervous about doing uh, card carving or paper carving live. It's not something I'm super, super familiar with. Um, to be honest, I don't think it's something that many people are super, super familiar with. Change ears here as well. Look at me being totally unprepared today. Here we go. I like that better. For now, anyways. All right. So, for anybody who doesn't know what paper carving or card carving or knifemanship is, it is essentially embellishment or, um, yeah, embellishment of calligraphic designs carved into paper with a knife. Uh, there were two penmen back in the, there was many penmen that did it, but there were two penmen back in the day that I would say did it more than average, and that is F.A. Krupp or Krupp, K-R-U-P-P, -P, um, and A.W. Dakin. Um, A.W. Dakin's work is the only work that I've seen in-person specimens of uh, in the Healy collection. Uh, that's in New York, and it was really, really cool to see in person uh, because a lot of the samples that were printed in the Business Educator, uh, if we look at what we know about penmanship, a second, I'll be right back. Um, as we know, all the all the specimens of penmanship that we study were printed in the magazines using um, print blocks, meaning they were focus going meaning they were photo engraved onto these blocks of wood metal, and that's how they were printed. But paper carving couldn't be done that way, really, because it's a three-dimensional thing. So I feel like it's, I don't actually honestly know how they were printed or if they did have blocks made out of them, but like halftone type of photo blocks. Um, but it's really hard to tell what is a shadow, what is a painted in shadow, because a lot of times they would do the design and then they would actually draw shadows or paint over top of the design or write with ink over top of a design to give it in person more character and, and life and whatnot. But it's really hard to tell uh, in the business educator where all those samples are printed, what is, um, what is a real shadow and what is fake. So we get to experiment. 
There are no modern books that I know of that teach this style. Uh, there are a couple artists on Instagram that I have found that do a very similar style. Uh, not, not so much in the calligraphic combining calligraphy and penmanship into it, but when it comes to the flowers and the petals and that type of stuff, they do. Um, what's the second hashtag? Oh, my shirt is Holy You, which was uh, the name of a tour I did. My first time touring Germany with Liebeskind Berlin. Um, it's a bag company based out of Berlin that I've worked with a number of times and hope to work with them again. Uh, Liebeskind, hit me up. Let's do another tour. <laughs> um, but no, that's when I was doing foiling tours in Germany. And I had to wear one of these shirts during the tour. And I just so happened to be wearing this shirt today. So, James, don't have this shape of X-Acto knife. I don't think it's necessary to, to have a curved blade X-Acto knife. I think you can do this, and maybe I'll try to do an example later with a regular X-Acto knife. And honestly, I'm assuming they just used pen knives back in the day, which are just regular thicker blades, like a regular carving or cutting blade. Um, I find that using the curved blade makes things a little bit easier for me. Is that the truth? I don't know. It's just, I use a curved blade. I don't think you need to. I think, honestly, any knife that is good enough works. And then, that's we can talk about the, the tools. And this is something I'm still trying to figure out. Now, when it comes to tools in knifemanship, obviously, you would use a knife. Now, they didn't have exacto knife brand, but they would have uh, sharp knives. I'm assuming most of them would have had hand-sharpened pen knives back in the day that they would use. Um, but there is a lot of documentation or like little footnotes in, there's a few series of lessons in card carving or lessons in knifemanship in the business educator that mention using the back of a nib. Um, now this one, you can see here, this is a, is it a Leonard Principle? Yeah, this is just a Leonard Principle nib in a straight holder. And then I took a pair of pliers and I flattened it so it's not curved. I don't know if you can see the curve. No, my camera won't focus there. Um, it's not nearly as curved as a standard nib. I flattened it out to get a uh, less aggressive curve and then sharpened it. So I sharpened the outside. I will say, I don't know a ton about sharpening knives and things like that. Um, I've learned a little bit because of the wood carving and stuff that I do. Uh, but I don't do a whole lot. Oh, nice, Marilyn. It's super cool. Um, I'm hoping to get a lot better at it. Uh, people keep asking me on Instagram and in comments and stuff saying, when are you gonna post a video on knifemanship? Or when are you gonna do more paper carving? Uh, and the, the main reason I haven't done a whole lot is the paper that I have that I've been using for carving isn't very thick. I don't have any really, really thick cardstock, and I'm in the market uh, for some. I've been trying to find some, and then in looking for some, other stuff kind of came in the way, and I'm not, I didn't, I'm not stopping paper carving, but it kind of got put on hold for a lot of other stuff. Uh, over the past few months, you guys know, I've been quite busy, um, so I haven't been able to dedicate a lot of time to it, and I don't specifically want to make like a real video about it until I have a better working knowledge of it. So all that to say, today, this, not a tutorial. Um, yeah, today is not a tutorial. You can follow along if you want. Uh, you could play. I posted in the description of this video. There is a link to a PDF uh, that is Lessons in Knifemanship by F.A. Krupp. Um, that's what I'm gonna be referencing a little bit today and some photos. Uh, it's basically just some techniques in carving leaves and flowers and stuff like that. Um, but I'm kind of figuring it out as I go and it's been a while since I've done it so I'm already forgetting how I sort of got the hang of it the first time. Um, Cause it's, it's interesting. It's, it's intuitive, but it's also not intuitive if that makes any sense. What up, Jenny? 
Jenny's getting inky with it. We haven't seen Jenny's getting inky with it in a while in here. Welcome. It does kind of look like embossing, and that's like one of my favorite things. And this is something I've seen, I haven't seen at all in the business educator or anything. I'm assuming people did it, but I created examples kind of this. Oh shoot, you can't really see the shadows. See, it's hard to get the shadows. It got flattened a little bit. Let me try to pick up the... Uh... But doing regular penmanship and then having card carving add dimension to it. So in this one, all the shades are carved. And what's neat about it, if you look close, the only the left side of every shade is a... Uh, you can maybe see a little bit better. Can my camera focus on that? Oh, you know what? I should do this. Do, do, do. My camera doesn't like being at this crazy angle. Here we go. You can see that a little bit better. Um, yeah, when I wrote it, this is all monoline. This is just a hairline without any shading whatsoever. I did the entire thing, and I just... The path of my nib is the left or the path that the left tine would have taken, and then the path that the right tine would have taken, I used as a cutting line. So there is no line there. Like, I didn't... There's no ink on this line. It's just in the air. I did it, or in my imagination, uh, with the knife as I cut in. So you can get, yeah, this cool sort of dimension to it. And that's something that I had just started experimenting with uh, when I sort of stepped away from card carving, or rather, I didn't step away, when I got busy doing other stuff. Um, I experiment with a lot of new things, I like learning new things, um, and like when I was doing the foiling stuff, or still I'm doing foiling, but when I was sort of creating that whole technique, it takes a lot of time and a lot of remembering uh, how to do different things. So I'm, I was trying to figure this out, but I just didn't have the time to dedicate wholly to it. So tonight we're just going to experiment and you can see here like this paper is maybe like a millimeter thick it's not very thick um i would like to find something that is more look here shout out to uh chin long open ink stand this is one of her old business cards check how thick that is so i need to find i think this is 220 uh 220 pound or something like that uh letterpress paper i don't know what it's like for writing on but I'm going to try to get a sample of it and see if I could write on it because it's super thick so I could carve nice and deep into it. But enough talking. Let's get to uh, let's get to carving. Let's see what we can do. Get these flowers out of the way. Get a fresh piece of paper. Just for demonstration's sake, this is the, uh, <laughs> this is the first sheet of paper that I, when I first started trying to figure out how this stuff worked, this is the, I don't think this my, probably isn't the first one, this is one of them. This was my test. Uh, just make a whole bunch of cuts and see what kind of neat shapes I could create. This is sort of what we're gonna be doing today. Just trying to make a bunch of things and then maybe we'll try to create a flower together. Uh, let me know in the chat, who has a knife and who is gonna try to do some card carving today? If you don't, that's all right, you don't have to. But if you are following along, let me know, because that's fun. Now, what I'm gonna pull up for reference is the PDF. Do, 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 do. Sorry. I am totally organized and prepared 
Here we go. Lessons in Knifemanship by F.A. Krupp. Come on. Why won't my phone open this file? I do not know, so I'm gonna load it in the browser. Penmanship folder. Knifemanship folder. Uh, lessons in Knifemanship by F.A. Krupp. And put it in the e-reader. Blazow. Okay. So. Now I don't know how much you're going to be able to see what's on my phone here. Which is why I linked to this PDF in the description. If you want to see what I'm trying to do, uh, jump in the description. What he does here. It's This is a series um, called Lessons in Knifemanship and Carving by F.A. Krupp. And it talks a little bit about doing these, but in his explanation, he never, he never, they don't really explain how to make these cuts specifically like this. <laughs> yeah, Jenny, that's what I need. I need 20 plus, like, if I could get 300 pound paper, that would be cool with me. Um, I'm going to talk to some people at Iampeth uh, next week about paper, because they know, I don't know a lot about paper. When it comes to paper, I know about the thin paper that glides really good for movement writing, but that's about it. I don't really know about thick papers, card stocks, and all that kind of stuff, because I need to find one that I can also write on, so I can do cool penmanship on them and carve them. Um, but yeah, he, he really, he just says like, practice these things, and then when they're good enough, mail them to me and I will review them for you. Um, but the angles that the paper has to change, like he put a few, you can kind of see here, he put an arrow, whoop, he put an arrow explaining like which way they're cut, but that's just the stems, the other things, like here, the stem is cut this way, and then these ones are cut that way, but he only does that for the first two, and then you're kind of on your own uh, a little bit which is similar to a lot of the lessons in penmanship and in general from back in the day. Um, it's, a, it's an interesting little uh, um, observation. If you've spent any time at all going through the business educators, you'll have like lessons in penmanship by Madaraz or something. Lessons in ornamental writing by Madaraz. And the first like two lessons will be super in depth and, and whatnot. And then as they progress, they're usually in chunks of like 10 lessons or 8 lessons or something like that. As they go, the commentary ends up just being like a small paragraph or something like, do this stuff. And then like one picture, just a sample of some letters. Um, but it's funny, like in books, in the book documentation, the or there's more writing about all topics. But in the business educator, that seems to, it's a trend. Every series of lessons as you get farther along in the series the lesson aspect of it or the the documentation uh, becomes less and you end up just getting an example to follow um, so we're gonna start we'll try to create this one this first set of leaves and like i said before if you want to see this better grab the pdf it's in the description um now one thing that's kind of one thing I like a lot about knifemanship, but one thing I also haven't figured out really at all. What up, Jagrudi? Um, oh, all devices should have a penmanship folder, James. I agree with that wholeheartedly. I don't exactly know where center is on my camera here. The camera is at a weird, everything's at a weird angle because I'm going to be putting the paper all over the place. But a lot depends, like the angle what side you cut from depends on where you want the shadows to cast. For example, if I were to do, just like if I was doing a penmanship flower, you're doing like, um, like throwing um, bird flourishing or feather flourishing or anything, you do this stroke like this. So then I have my, oh, hard to see, hard to see. 
so I have the, the hard dark line is closest to me, which makes sense because that's the way the light works. But if I turn this this way, the uh, because my pen or my knife went in this way, I get a better shade. Like I going this way, I get a bit of a dark line there, but not as much as if I go this way because my cut is coming in is coming in from the right. What up, Mush? So like if I were to make that shallower to get that cut a little deeper. Pretty sure I cut through the paper on that one, but that's okay. You can explain, you can see what I'm demonstrating. So now you get these two, like you get on the right side or on the left side, this like really light line where your paper is starting to come up. And then on the right side, you get the hard shadow, which is cool. And if we look at it this way, now it's different. Now we have no hard shadow at all. We just have this gray line on this side and then almost like a light line right at the top. We don't get that hard black, hard black shadow. So it's interesting. A lot of thought gets to, or has to sort of happen to see how you want your feathers and whatnot to, um, to shade. And I'll be honest, I haven't given too much thought to that. I just kind of been focused on the strokes themselves. Uh, and I figured I would get to that eventually. But if we were to do this one right here, now it looks to me like he's, his hard line is on the left side, it's on the far side. So we're gonna have to come in this from this side and cut that first line. So we'll do that. We're gonna keep the same angle we had going here. Sorry, my paper is gonna be going all over the place. And then I'm gonna carve this line. Like so. So I have that line carved. Geez, when I turn it around, you notice like that one that I just carved, you see it, you see a nice light and dark. But then when I turn it this way, it's almost invisible. So interesting things to, to, uh, to notice. Okay, and now, so you'll notice the, the larger leaves are going underneath the smaller leaves, which means we have to cut from the smaller leaf to the bigger leaves. Um, again, this is not tutorial, this is me just talking to myself about what I have to do. Um, we go through in these this arc so that we can... Is that how that was done? Yeah, that would be that way. Or, I mean, if I was left-handed, I, I would do it with my left. The back side of the paper? Right there. I didn't go through yet on any of the cuts I've made. Um, now, my paper is really thin, so you can see the line uh, on... Like, this one is a little bit thicker when I did my name. Uh, there's no... You can't see anything. Well, you can't see one thing. I got a little too deep. That's why it's important. I have to get the right kind of cardstock. I gotta get thicker stuff. Um, but ideally, you keep the knife shallow enough. Yeah, you don't want to cut all the way through. Because ideally, you want to be able to send a card. Uh, like example, we have this whole flower here. And if I turn that around, there are a couple places where I got close, but on the other side, there's the, the paper isn't cut anywhere. A few places, the knife sort of like indented uh, the very bottom layer, but nowhere on this page did the knife cut through. And that's on thin paper, so that one took, took some, uh, some effort on my part to hide that. Yeah, we want the back to just look like paper. Ideally. All right, let's try to make some of these leaves. I'm <laughs> turning my phone and my paper around. I apologize that this late night live is gonna look a little chaotic. Now, 
one thing I learned, here, I'll just show this as an example real quick. Sorry, crook, we're gonna do something else. Um, one thing I learned just about myself and the way I carve and the way I get control, if I were randomly doing a le doing leaves, pulling this way, like you can see, I'm not getting a super heavy, this is, a, my knife is quite vertical. If I make it more shallow, and the way I do that is I just drop it down one finger. Are these proper techniques? I don't know. Um, and you can come this way. That gives you a little bit of a uh, shallower look. But then when I do that, I have a tough time making this line nice and clean. And I have found when I turn, when I hold the knife in the web and I cut this way, when I cut away from myself, I'm able to get a lot more control. I think anyways, and I'm assuming this is different for different people. So I tend to cut away from myself. And this is something that I had completely forgotten um, until just a few minutes ago I was trying and I was like, oh, that feels, it feels kind of better cutting away from yourself. Cutting sort of like going around that way. Sort of. It's all about, I, this is why I haven't done a tutorial, because I don't know the proper ways and what works best, because uh, I tend to do it different every single time, because I'm still trying to figure it out. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's interesting. If you make mistakes, can you burnish it back in? I've honestly never tried. I bet you. If you make a mistake, I have a burnisher here. I have a ball stylus that should work. I'm wondering if there's some kind of a paste or something you could put in, because you can, to a degree, you can take that back flat. You can still see the line there, it's not completely gone. But I bet you there's a way that you could, and potentially on like a, a thicker, this is really smooth cardstock paper, I bet you there's, with another paper that's maybe slightly more fibrous, uh, or with some form of adhesive, like if you had, if the line wasn't super angled, if you just had like a starting line like that, you can almost make that go away entirely by burnishing. It's still there a little bit, but you can get quite a bit of it gone. Like, the, I mean, on the camera, totally gone. Hello, Fozzie and the girls. What's going on, everybody? Welcome. We're trying to figure out how to cut things today. <laughs> how to cut flowers. Yeah, it's kind of magic. You can erase. Sort of. Um, once I experiment with more papers. Actually, let me try. I have this, like, creamy cardstock. Let's just try to do a line and try to erase it real quick. This is a thicker cardstock, but I don't have a lot of it. I just, I don't even know where it came from. I just had a couple pieces. It might have been from a sample. And same type of deal. I can get the, the shade to come down, but I still have my initial, that initial cut line is still there. One other thing that I discovered, uh, if I were to make, um, like a leaf, shape like that, I could go in later with a super shallow, and this is, I think, this is how I did my, um, uh, when I did my name, you can go in super shallow and kind of cut that away, like that. So then I get this really big, really nice scoop, and you can see that doesn't go through, I haven't gone through the paper yet there um but that's like you would go through all of these probably afterwards there might be a way to do it the first time but i don't know how to do it yet but this totally works 
to go in after and make those cuts deeper. Well, one of those went through the back of the page. I felt it. So you can see now those are super up and scaly. So I'm guessing they did a lot of that. Because uh, some of the... Some of the examples they posted in the business educator. Like, look at this butterfly. Look at this thing. That whole thing, like this whole feather or feather, this whole wing is not touching the bottom part of the page. It's completely up. So I guess it's the equivalent of drawing in shades after you write them. Um, you can do your initial carving and then sort of slice it back. Yeah, and they did, there's a boat that he did as well. Oh, this was A.W. Dakin, but the bottom of the sails, you can see they're fully coming up off the page. And then you can see this one, this whole thing is just, it looks like it was carved in wood. This whole design. Sorry, this camera angle is really weird. Shoot. And then are there any other crazy examples like that? Not really, most of the other ones are small. I definitely, this is one of my, I want to replicate this signature one day. Oops, this way. Uh, this is one of, it's an E.W. Blozer signature, but it's by uh, F.A. Krupp. Beautiful signature, super whimsical. And then he added these little flowers and this feather on the bottom. And it looks so cool. Like the melding of signature writing and card carving together. Both, it's such a, such a, so masterfully done. Um, I want to be able to do that, basically. So that's why we're doing this. The point is to massacre the paper, Fozzie. That's the whole... Maybe if you massacre the paper, there will be a true crimes uh, TV series about it. All right, now I want to figure out in F.A. Krupp's lessons Yeah, those look dope. But I have the biggest issue controlling the, um, just controlling the lines. <laughs> Maybe this is good practice then, Fozzy. First line, I mean, his is a lot curved than that. We'll do a curvier one. There, curved line. And then... See, now he has his arrow going... His arrow is coming down, which means he's saying he cut those this way. But how? I mean, yeah, you cut them that way, but he would have had—he would have had to turn the paper. I'm imagining have to carve a fern. Oh, I should. I could carve, carve Rasta, my my Boston fern. Hey, what up, Lori? Sorry, I haven't been paying very much attention to the chat so far. This one starts there. I mean, for practice, I could always pencil these in, I suppose. But if we start here, bring that in, and then we start our next cut um, inside. So we start our next cut starts underneath this one. And then the next one, same thing, starts underneath, goes 
close to the stem. I guess also cutting away from myself is maybe uh, safer than cutting towards myself. The Boy Scout in me would be proud that I'm cutting away from myself. I often break cutting rules when I'm carving wood. There, and then it stops there, right? Yeah, we'll stop it there. Now, his is super deep, so we're gonna go in and make these deeper. And like I said before, there might be a way to do this while you're initially cutting, um, which would be awesome. But I don't know how to do that. My knife control is not that great yet. We can lift that up. How often do you cut your fingers? I don't cut my fingers. I think I did cut myself once very lightly. Um, when I was first doing it, but if you pay attention, you won't cut yourself. You just, like what I was just about to do, you don't do this, because then if you slip, then it's right there. So always keep your fingers behind the blade, and you shouldn't have a problem. Oh, I think I went through the paper. Whoopsies. Yep, totally did. Oh well. these a little shallower. Oh, that one's through the paper too. My initial cuts were too deep. Whoopsies. Oh well. And there we have a not exactly perfect. You can see there when you look under, you can see where I cut through the page. Oopsies. Yeah, see? Oops. Got way too overzealous with my initial cuts. Alright, we're gonna try to do another one of those. But I want to... Yeah, we'll just do another one of those exactly like that. Let's see if we can't do it a little bit better. He almost gets... I'm gonna carve this first line from the other direction. Right? Is that what I want to do? His light source is opposite of mine, so it's weird. <laughs> but if I carve this line this way... Like so... There, now, so this lip um, is open on the left side, is it's coming in that direction from the left. So now, when I bring these into the stem, I can tuck them underneath and hide them underneath that first little cut, in theory. Bended unicorn horn, I like it. This unicorn, uh, why is it bent? Did he not get enough water? Or was he raised in... Is that what happens when unicorns are raised in captivity? Okay, starting off. Same thing. We're gonna give this first leaf an actual little... I'm going to give my first leaf an actual point. Since it's on its own up there, then the rest will come from underneath. Ooh. 
nice and shallow. You can see my hand is shaking a little bit, not because I'm pressing really hard, I'm hardly pressing at all, I'm just trying to control my motion a lot. Uh, and you can see I'm using now the current grip. I have my knife in my hand and I'm using pushing on the back of the blade to get my curve. Yeah, it does take a lot of patience. Definite change of pace from the rapid movement writing that I normally do on these late night videos. Ooh, that one was kind of wonky shaped. Whoops. Trying to not go through the paper this time. There. Okay, now we'll thicken, make those a little deeper. I went through. Darn it. But that one looks better. What up, John? What does that mean, Fuzzy? Can't you just get more coffee? All right, you know what? I'm gonna give that one more leaf. So it's a little longer. Here we go. Slice it and make it deeper. Like I said, ideally I won't have to do that all the time. Ideally I'll be able to start making cuts deeper. You'll notice this last one, I got the slice, I got really good and it's just like the very first layer of the page. And you're able to get a really nice curve, like you can really bring it up. When you cut through like these ones, the cardstock is too thick, so you can't really get it up that well. Um, so it just kind of, but if you get a nice thin slice like this one, it can fully come and curve off the page. So when I turn it this way, you get a nice there. And then the light source would look more like that, uh, the way he has it in the magazine. There's the magazine. Oh, you can't see the ma- Oh, there, you can kind of see the magazine version, my version, magazine version, my version. There we go. Lesson one. Good job, everybody. <laughs> it's been hot here. We have had no rain in a long time. It's not cocaine, but coffee.
makes sense. All right, you go. Please, when you read this letter, have a read. What you, here's what you do, James. You give a specific time of day and what way to face next to an open next to a window. So they read it, and you get a nice natural sunlight shaded. Yeah, because like this doesn't look. It still looks cool, but it doesn't look nearly as impressive as that. That looks way doper. I don't think I could carve it with the angle that way because my hand would just be casting a shadow on the entire design if I did it like that. Curve those up more. Anyways, there's lesson one. Let's do another one. I'll admit number two, I've never uh, see you later, Mush. Thanks for hanging out. I've never been able to make this one look good yet. <laughs> so this one, he has an undercurve. And then he has these little... Just It seems like it should be really easy, but it never looks good when I do it. So let's try. So same thing, I'm gonna do the, the cut from the left side. So I'm gonna do it upside down. Yeah, it could be bamboo. Um, from the left side, yeah, I'm gonna go from the, it's really weird doing it opposite light source as he did it. I guess I could do his upside down. Oh, no, yeah, that works. I'm gonna carve, so I'm gonna carve it like this. And then that way, I'm working with the same light source he's working with. Since I'm turning my page so often anyway, it doesn't really matter what up is. All right, so we have a curve coming down this way. Nice and round curve. And then we have little <laughs> I don't know if today could be called a master class. Uh, fun fact, I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, <laughs> when it comes to card car to carving, I don't really know what to do. But I'm glad you think it like that. I mean, that's essentially my life. I just do random stuff all the time. All right, we're gonna go out this way. And then we just do four of those. And then we do four smaller ones. Oh, sorry, I'm off screen. I'm not getting many good sh sh Oh. Yeah. His are cut the opposite. What? Okay, I'm gonna try to cut mine the way. How did it do this? Let's try this second set and we'll see which one looks better. <laughs> this one has to be a pull cut if I'm going this way. Whoops, let's do another one. Oh, this isn't working out very well. Those ones aren't deep enough. We gotta make those deeper. Those first two were very shallow. That's better. I 
We can't do penmanship all the time. Oh, that looks so much better. Cool. So, perfect example of when cutting one way versus cutting the other way. Now, out of curiosity, would this second one still look better if it was upside down? Yep, okay. Cool. So that's good to know. So in this instance, the rule, which I'm trying to turn, I'm trying to create little rules in my head. Um, just like with penmanship, we have little guidelines. But so far my rule is to cut from the outside of a line to get for a feather or for a leaf. How heavy is my yardstick? I've never measured my yardstick. Uh, <laughs> uh, my cardstock, this cardstock is very thin. I don't actually know what, uh, what weight it is. Um, I just, I got this when I was in Hong Kong and it's just, it's just like cover. It's not even cardstock. This is just like cover stock. So it's thick-ish, but not thick enough for card carving. Um, you can see here, I go through every once in a while. Not a lot though, those last two, yeah, these last, the, the bamboo we'll call it, didn't cut through the paper at all. Um, the thicker the better. Uh, they talk in, I don't remember which one of the lesson series, they give like a, they say to glue a kind of cardboard together, but that kind of cardboard is no longer readily accessible. Um, and sold the way they sort of sold it back in the day. I've been trying to figure that out. So we just need like, I would say 200 pound plus cardstock. Um, letterpress type paper is probably best. But as you can see, this is much thinner and it's creating still pretty good results. Um, you just have to be really careful to not go through not going to twerk, OJ Swinney. We could do a dance video one day, but it will not include twerking. I can guarantee you that. Oh, yay, Fozzie. That would be dope. I will, like I said, this, this is, this piece of cardstock right here, um, is... Uh, Cranes 220 something um, that Chin used for her business cards back in the day and it's super thick uh, and it's probably when I saw this I messaged her to ask what kind of paper this was I don't know if you can write on it really well um, but it would be great for carving so I'm gonna try to get some of that um, but in the meantime this stuff works all right let's do another smaller one Whoops, that was not very symmetrical, but that's okay. I'll make it deeper as well. One of the cool things about card carving that I learned or that I realized like right when I first started it, because the shapes you're creating are pretty simple, it's not hard. Like, once you get the figuring out sort of where things go, or like what... I want this to be a little longer. Um, making the, the cuts is pretty simple. One 
final one of these. Little bamboo. Sweet. So apart from if we ignore uh, this first one, and I just cut things the wrong way, who knew that it could make such a big difference? These look really good. All right. Oh. Now this next one. Hey, Claire. Yeah, um, it depends. Like, uh, I'll try to get an example here. Zoomed in as far as I can go. Um, if we were to do, for example, three lines, if I go vertical, what happens when you go vertical is you get no shadow. You'll get a line, but even if I press hard, like I'm just cutting into my page and I get a little bit of a buckle. Um, and then right now my light source is on the left hand side. So when I go, when I put my knife on the right and cut in, I get a black line on the right. Or if I were to, I have to cut it this way. But if I were to go the opposite direction, then I get this other look where I don't get a solid shade line. Um, and if I went like really angled with my knife on the right. Funny, it's way easier to push than pull knife strokes. That's what I was trying to do. So that's, um, depending on the the size of shade you want, it's how, I guess, it's more so how hard you push and how deep you go in, but I think you always want to have one of the two angles, because when you go more vertical, you don't really get anything at all. And if something's really small, like if we had a tiny little leaf, um, like let's say this was a thing and it had a tiny little leaf on the end. If I were to do this without um, if I was straight up and down you would barely like it's already tough to see so you want to make sure that you're at an angle so that you can go back in if you need to and like that little leaf now fully comes like a few millimeters off the page. I don't know if you can see that very well. Does it look better this way? Not terrible, well, kind of, yeah. So now this little leaf comes way off the page and we can only bring it off the page if we cut at a shallow angle. So I would say always use an angle, but it's depending how hard you press, how much of a of a, of a line you're gonna get. But if we're fully up and down, then it's really hard to get underneath something and pull it up when it's tiny. Bamboo needs a lazy panda. I don't know how to draw a lazy panda, but I like that emoji. Okay. All right. Now he stops giving us instruction. <laughs> And he just goes for it like this. So what we have to figure out here. So we have our first line, which is a compound curve. Obviously the outside of these flowers or these feathers, whoa, leaves, 
um, are what he used. And then he carved the insides after from the opposite direction. Now the question is, you would assume, I guess, that these are just done the exact opposite. You wouldn't carve the inside of one leaf and the outside of another leaf. That wouldn't make sense. So all the leaves are carved from the outside on both. All right. That little curve in each one of those leaves is going to be a bit of a challenge. Yeah, pretty much. Deeper the cut, darker the line. So long as it's deep at an angle. If it's deep straight down, then you're just going to cut through your page. All right, let's try this one. Again, I'm doing his example upside down so our light sources match. So we have a compound curve starting off. What's natural tendency, I want to come in, like if I was drawing these, I would come in with my pencil and draw them this way. You go from the stem, sorry, you go from the stem, I'd come up, and then either back in or come up the other direction. But I have already learned that when I pull the, pull the cutting strokes, I don't have as much control as when I push them. So I'm going to try and do these pushing in from, I guess I could do them one, I could do, I could go from the base. Doesn't really matter, I guess, because they don't really interfere with each other. The shape is going to be the weird part. <laughs> I don't know the angle. Yeah, we would assume his second cut is going this way. I'll tell you what, let's make all the outside cuts and then we'll make the inside cuts. That makes sense. That's not a very straight, not a very smooth line. This is gonna take some figuring out. This is the weird part to me, not uh, like this is the same as say flourishing feathers and whatnot. Um, in offhand flourishing, you can always pencil in the outline, which I know a lot of penmen do. You pencil the outline of your feather, fill it in, you can erase. The problem with this, you can erase, <clears throat> but it, uh, if it gets if the ink or the like your erasing can damage the carving and then you have to re pull it back up again with the knife and I feel like that's kind of more trouble than it's worth. All right, so we did all that. Now let's go this way and carve the inside. Oh, that's a fat leaf. Whoopsies. I'm supposed to be following the shapes of these leaves. My leaves aren't very nicely shaped, but that's all right. <laughs> they should bubble out and then go back in. There we go. That's better. Now, I don't know if going from the base to the outside is the best way to do that, if I'm being honest. Hmm. 
Now, if we were to have made these cut shallow enough, I could essentially go in here and bring the entire leaf off the page. But unfortunately, my cuts aren't quite shallow enough to do that. I can bring the tip off the page like that. There we go. But I can't bring the whole leaf off the page. I also imagine that an artist would get good enough that they could carve. You see how I'm now changing from one side to the other without rotating the page? I'm assuming some artists could just do both sides, just like how an artist can paint from both sides without having to rotate their entire canvas. I'm not one of those artists because I'm a control freak. <laughs> Oops. Okay. That's not the cleanest job in the world, but it gets, it's, it's there. Now let's do the other side, see if we can't do a little bit of a better job. Then I think we're going to do, we're going to skip and do a flower. This is time consuming. Okay, let's see if we can't get these ones shaped a little better. Wax shaped flowers or leaves. I need to learn how to speak English. Oh, that one wasn't very good. good thing about plants, they're organic. They can be shaped any old way. What up, Hody? Welcome. In nature, they can be shaped any old way, but in art, I mean, we kind of want them to make sense, so that doesn't really help us. Okay, now let's do, now I want to do these, I want to pull these, but, ah, see, this is going to be better, because I'm starting, if I push the stroke, I'm starting it from, from the tip, so it's going to, yeah, it's going to be better. Oh, maybe not, <laughs> I didn't compound curve it in. Curve! Oh no! Very thick leaf. Whoops. When you get super deep into the paper, sometimes it just wants to go. Now you can see the benefit of when I did these ones, I was able to do, to start the second stroke from the tip of the leaf. And when you do that, it better exposes or better releases the tip. So you can get it raised like that. Nice. In theory. Keeping in mind that I, sorry, I was off frame, that I don't really know what I'm talking about. Okay, so there's that one. Not the prettiest uh, in the world, but it looks like this way. That uh, same thing. These look weird. They're a little, maybe a little high. Oh, and he, what you could also do, and in the inside, I can do a light 
line that's just slightly angled. So each leaf has a visible center vein. Whoops. Oh, that leaf completely, whoopsies. So these it can be just super light. There. <laughs> I'm assuming if we hit midnight tonight, I would turn it into a writing session. I wouldn't carve uh, with the black light on. But um, I will say I'm not planning to go to midnight tonight. I'll apologize in advance to everybody. This is not going to be a super late, uh, late night live. Uh, I have packing to do and some work to do still, and I have to, what time is it now? It is 10, and I have to leave for the airport at around 4.30, 5 o'clock in the morning. Um, so I have, a, I have a late night, and I will not be doing it on live. Um, Claire has a question. Is it possible that the leaf has been embossed slash debossed with the back of the knife to make that little detail line? Yes, very possible. Uh, you'll notice here, I'll see if the, I'm hoping the camera can pick it up. Uh, on this, let's see here. On this flower, focus camera. On this flower, if you look, these petals each have a tiny little line, which is just a very small cut. But the cool thing about these petals, and this will be much more uh, defined in thicker writing, or in, sorry, on thicker paper, because I could dig a lot deeper. But when these curved petals are made by gouging into the page, and what that does is obviously takes away material from this leaf. So this, out, this outer leaf is actually concave. Concave? Convex? Concave. It's actually into the page which gives it a really cool look. So that's just as an example of what that sort of looks like. If you have your gouge, or in this scenario, the back of a nib that sharpened, if I were to cut in, say like that, and then this is again, not the best paper for this, but then that rolls so you have that petal, and now what I'm left with, I have this indent here. And that indent, if I was working with thicker paper, uh, obviously I don't want to go through this paper, because that would be easy to do. Oh, that was a, actually a really good one. I was pushing to go through the paper, but I didn't. I went, I think, just the right amount of depth. Anyways, didn't go through, but that one looks better. So you can see I have that little scoop, like a little spoon. And then with that there, all you have to do then is define the edge of the leaf. And there are multiple angles that you could do this cut. I'm just gonna do each one away because that's the way I have the most control. So then I have a definition to that leaf. And then if I go in here and free the tip of this, come on. Now, and this is where thicker cardstock would make this much better because now I'm, it's already, there's not a lot of material there. So I'm already getting dangerously close to cutting through. 
but if I'm able to expose that tip, I can increase that shadow and illusion of the spoon because the whole tip of that leaf can come up or that petal. There we go, that's what we want. And then you add just a little bane of that flower and you got a whole flower petal. Oh yeah, Marilyn, don't, uh, unless you're working in really, really, really thick cardstock, uh, that you're and you know you're not gonna cut into your page. I guess I potentially should have mentioned that. I'm working on a cutting mat today because I mean I have cut through into my leather multiple times uh, in the past doing other things when I was wood carving and stuff. But yeah, if you're not using really thick cardstock, uh, be careful. I would get a yeah get a cutting mat or a cutting board or something or cereal box, something that you're not going to cut through. Um, hopefully that your, hopefully your cut isn't too, too crazy into your leather desk pad. Marilyn, fingers crossed. There we go. Those were my favorite to make when I was doing the, the flowers, getting that scoop, because it just looks so cool. And it has so much dimension to it. And it looks good from pretty much all angles because there's always a shadow with that petal going out. <laughs> yeah, I almost did the same thing before stream started. Marilyn, I grabbed a piece and I was gonna cut and I was like, oh, wait a minute, this is risky. And then I grabbed my cutting mat to the rescue. Here we go. Shall we make a flower? Since we did that, you wanna make a whole flower of one of those? We could do that. We could essentially recreate this little guy, which is sort of became my uh, my go-to uh, because it was the first thing I learned to carve. So it was the thing that I sort of carved all over the place. All right, let's carve one of those then. And these, um, unfortunately, my my <laughs> cutting mat was super dirty when I made these, so they got. Um, super dirty on the back, but these were sort of designed so that they could be cut on one side and then this would be writing on the other side potentially, like a like a name card. They're just cardstock cut into business card sizes. And then, yeah, all right, let's do it. Let's make this little flower. So, I would say we start with the flower and then we'll add the petals after or the yeah we'll add the stem and all the other stuff around it that seems to make the most sense all right leather mats are are pretty good oh just Swinney if I do say so myself <laughs> Okay. So, with this little flower, we're gonna start on the inside. So you can, now this is, I don't really know how to make these without a gouge, without the sharpened back of a nib, or you could use something like this, which is a wood carving gouge. Um, 
We could experiment and try to do this without, but I feel like it's tough because essentially what we're doing, just like we did here, we're carving a little like that. We're chiseling out a little scoop. So you can see neither of those three went into the, neither of them went through the page. And then you're rolling those up. Now, and this is what they used the back of the nib for. Now, I've never tried this before, but if you wanted to do one without, and you don't, or you, and you don't have a gouge, I would guess it's a little more work. It's going to be a little harder. But you could do something like this. If I go super shallow, and make that a shape. Essentially, you're just doing two straight lines. And then what I'm going to do is free the tip there and very shallow cut under it with my knife like this. There. So I just got that top layer. I can use James's trick reburnishing the places where I accidentally dug into the paper to hide those little mishtackles. There we go. There, so that works. And then we roll that top. Come on, roll for me. There we go. We roll that top. You won't get quite as nice of a clean scoop on the inside, but it'll do the trick. finger cuticle cutting gouger that would come in handy funny I uh, you mentioned I used for the first time last week Ooh, look at my nice cuticles I used um, cuticle dissolving cream randomly um, I was curious and it totally worked it was pretty cool I'm not usually I don't really pay much attention but I had cuticles and I saw this thing online randomly about this cream that you put on and it just dissolved the cuticle skin and I tried it and it worked really well. I, well. A while ago I tried to like randomly cut cuticle and that's not a good idea. Get infected and just cut too deep and painful and not a good idea. But I was randomly giving myself some fingernail care and I used cuticle dissolving cream and it totally worked. It was awesome. Oh, let's see. So, if I use my ball stylus here, the part that we cut in here, I could, oh yeah, I could fully smooth that out inside there and even give it depth. Booyah, that looks nice now. And you could get in there with a better shaped burnisher to get that looking even nicer in there if you wanted. But the easiest thing... <laughs> it was actually fuzzy. That, ep that, that episode, that late night live when David was in here asking me about my fingernails. Um, that's what made me think about it a long time ago. Because I do, I cut my fingernails, and I use a, an emery pad and go through the layers. I always have done that. I actually just did that yesterday. Uh, but I've never, I push back my cuticles, but I've never, like, cut them. I didn't know that was a thing people did. And then when David mentioned um, cuticle care, I randomly one night was Googling, and I saw this cream. And then just a few days ago, uh, I was at the <laughs> pharmacy, and I picked some up, and I tried it, and it was, it worked great. 
<laughs> but yeah, I was saying the easiest way to do this, because that's a lot of work to do each pedal that way, uh, the easiest way to do this would be to get a gouge or to sharpen the back of a nib. Um, I am currently experimenting. Let's see if I can find one. I haven't got it to work yet. Where is one? All my nibs are magnetic. Whoops. Um, I've been experimenting. Oh, I can't find any. Huh, okay, I'll just explain it because I can't find the ones. Maybe I ruined it and had to throw it away. Uh, but I was experimenting with um, sharpening, let's see if I take this Leonard as an example. I've been experimenting with sharpening instead of the the rounded bit to make a, a gouge, I sharpened this long part on the one side because I wanted to see if I could use that to make all of these long cuts. Like cuts like if I wanted to make something like this, I wanted to see if I could do it with a nib so that the whole design could be made with a nib um, and I wouldn't have to carry around like a custom gouge or a custom knife with me all the time. I just wanted to like, I would just get in the habit of sharpening my the back of my nibs. And then when I was writing, if I was just like, do de do de do writing, writing, writing. Oh, I want to do some carving. Pull it out, put it in backwards. Carve, 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 carve. Done. How convenient and cool would that be? Um, is that how they did it? I don't know. Uh, they do mention a lot carving the back of the nib to make strokes, but I don't understand how they did that. Um, yeah, I've been, I got to experiment with different nibs because some different nibs will sharpen better than others. And then just, it totally changes the angle because there is the curve there as well. So I don't know. They make it sound really easy. They're like, oh yeah, carve the back of your nib and you can make these cuts. What? Sure, whatever 1800s penman who was uh, good at stuff. It's confusing. Uh, what tool am I using? I use... Da -da -da -da. So, the same thing I use to sharpen my... Um, my wood carving tools. I have this, this is probably potentially not the best thing, uh, but it gets the job done for me. Flex cut, flex cut, is that what they're called? Yeah, flex cut makes, they make the gouges that I use for wood carving, the mini gouge set, and they sell this, show it in the face cam, I'll show it down here. They make this, now this isn't a sharpener, this is for burnishing. Burnishing is not the word. What's the word I'm looking for? Stropping. This is a a strop. It's essentially, this is a pad of leather, and this is sort of textured uh, wood, I would say. And you load it with this. It's almost like chalk. This is a sharpening compound. And just as an example, uh, I'll make a mess, but that's okay. You, right here, Take your sharpening compound, put it in there, and then I take my nib, and I do this. And that just strops the edge, and you can Google uh, how to use a strop or sh knife sharpening, and it's like a final technique. There is... I also use, to get things started, I use this, which is an Arkansas stone, which is what I use when I'm sharpening nibs and whatnot. Um, but it's just a sharpening stone, if you happen to have a knife sharpening stone or something like that. I use that to, and I'll preface by saying this might not be the best way to do this, it might not, that might not be a good way to do it at all. I know very little about sharpening things, especially the backs of nibs. Um, but I leave the inside, is my straight flat line and then the outside is where I carve my taper into it like you would a chisel. Uh, if you google 
how to sharpen a gouge, uh, which is how to sharpen a gouge. And the people demonstrate on large ones, large gouges and chisels and whatnot. You just min shrink that down into a nib. Um, so you use the t techniques they use with water or whatnot to sharpen, uh, to add the taper on, however you want that added. And then you finish it up with the strop. And then once it's sharp, you just, you can keep it sharp with the strop. You don't have to resharpen it on the stone. You just keep doing this every once in a while and it keeps that edge sharp. But you do this and then you'll eventually, as you keep doing it and sharpening, you get what's called a burr on the inside. And then you can use one of this side to get rid of that burr. It's better to sharpen it uh, when it's not, you want a pen holder that's a little bit thinner than this one. So you can get, when you're sharpening the inside, you can get it nice and flat so you're not at an angle. Show it this way. <laughs> so you're, you're flat to it, not at an angle. Um, but again, don't take what I'm saying as tutorial um, because I'm not explaining it very well and I'm not all that good at it. Uh, but that's what I use. Arkansas stone and a strop from FlexCut that's made for little gouges, so it works really good for the nibs. And then as far as nibs, Leonard Principles is what I use the most. Um, yeah, all right. Now let's make a flower. So for the inside, this flower is gonna have, let's do, we'll do three sets of curved petals. So risk, this will be so much easier if I had thicker cardstock because when I'm cutting in, I wanna cut in and then I wanna cut into that cut. So the risk of going through the paper is very high when I do it this way, but I'm gonna do it anyways. And if I go through the page, that's okay. <laughs> Yay letter from Ireland. It's hot in my apartment tonight. <laughs> Congratulations, Oja Swinney. Ah, Hori, I saw that. Uh, Kahlo told me. I look forward to trying it. Thank you very much. I will, uh, we can chat on Instagram or on the Discord um, what I owe you for that, obviously, because I want to pay you for it. Okay, here we go. Let's make a flower. Zoom back in. Get our focus. Sure. Okay, so we will start with, I'm gonna use my gouge first to get just four little, I'm gonna try to make these nice and shallow. I'm just gonna make four little petals. They don't have to be really long. I'm just gonna bring them towards the center. Here we go. That last one was a little deep, but that's okay. Here we go. So four petals, and now I will roll them. And the shallower you can make your cuts, the easier it's going to be to roll them. If you get the cardstock too thick, it's not going to want to roll. A couple of mine went a little too deep, so they're pretty thick. But we just roll those in. Here we go. And there's the inside of our flower. Now I'm just, I'm copying the one that I did. Now here's where the, uh, the perfectionist uh, in me struggles a little bit 
because now we had four, it would have been actually, yeah. Since they're small, what up, Rose? Can I make a sunflower? I tried to make a sunflower once. This was my sunflower attempt. My first, is this either my, I can't remember if it was my first or second sunflower attempt. Some of my actual petals uh, fell off. That was my sunflower attempt, one of them. I plan on doing another one. I don't know if I'll get it, I'll get to one tonight, but I wanna learn to carve a good sunflower. All right, so now what we're gonna do, I'm gonna move to my nib, because it's a little bit of a wider gouge, and I'm going to cut. Am I going to the gouge? I'm going to cut six petals around my flower. So I'm just trying to visually in my brain plan. Yeah, I'm just gonna do six all the way around. Relatively small ones, again, we don't wanna go too deep. Oh, something in my eye. from when it was on the strong. There's one. Uh-oh. Two. That one look got a little messed up, but it'll be hidden. Three. Oh, I feel like my gouge is not very sharp right now. Oh, this is just gonna be five. I made them too big. Five petals, not six, that works. We'll roll those. deep on some of them so they're quite thick unfortunately <laughs> dab make a dragon dragon will be dope the cool thing is like once you get the hang of it you can pretty much carve anything that you flourish with the same type of rules that we use for flourishing. And Zayner flourished a dragon, so you could carve a dragon. Okay, there's those petals. Now I'm gonna do, this is where we get scary because we're carving into the exact same ones. Into the same holes, we want the, these petals to be right behind the ones we just made. But I'm going to strut this real quick because it didn't feel very sharp. Alternatively, you could also just get an actual gouge, an actual carving gouge that's about this size for wood carving. That would be pretty easy to find, I imagine. Because the thing with nib metal, I, also, I don't assume it's super durable. So I don't imagine it holds a sharp edge for very long because it's not really hardened steel like a knife would be there we go hopefully that did the trick if it didn't well 
we'll make it work anyways. Yeah. Steal a plotter. Okay, so now we just carve behind those ones, these ones nice big petals this time, so we're going to go just as deep as we can without cutting through the page. Obviously the sharper your gauge is easier this is going to be and the cleaner result you'll probably have mine doesn't feel very sharp today which is becoming problematic but it's working there we go now we roll those Yeah, I'll be trying to do some, I mean, I'll post whatever uh, discoveries I make with cardstock, probably in the Discord. Oh no, I cut through. Whoopsies. This flower shows a little bit of the cutting mat behind it, but that's okay. Oops. I went a little too deep. Alternatively, you could also, if you don't have cardstock, you just have cover paper or whatnot you could glue a couple sheets of it together like if i glued two pieces of what i'm working on right now together it would probably work really good you have to i don't know what kind of glue works best or if the kind of glue even matters that much into its carvability afterwards i can't say oh i went through in a lot of places okay that's okay there we go there's my curled petals. Now we do the same thing we did over here. Zooming. There we go. We add those little, our petals. I'm doing mine with push strokes. Starting a little bit outside so I can get a nice compound curve into the petal. I'm doing all of the right side petals first. And then I'll go around the opposite direction and do the other one. Alternatively, you could probably get away with just doing one side, but nah. Here we go. Oh, that first one was pretty messed up. That's okay. Now we go opposite. And this is very much if it's easier for you to push the stroke, pull the stroke. I mean, I'm still experimenting with what um, carving technique or specific cutting technique I like best. Uh, that's a lot of the stuff that's not documented. So there are probably people out there that do stuff they could tell me what's the best way to do these things but hmm, experimenting is also fun here we go now I'm gonna give each leaf just a tiny little vein down 
the center like so and then I will free oops sorry free the points oh no cut through by accident being very careful to not go through because the paper is very thin in some of these spots If I get this figured out enough, this could be a whole class, all on its own. It's kind of fun. Erase your mistakes. And I mentioned this in the beginning, but I'm assuming all of these strokes could be, I'm going back and like touching up all the cuts. I'm, a, I'm certain there's a way that if you get good enough with the knife that this all just happens at once. Um, I unfortunately, I just haven't put in the time. I'm not familiar enough to be that sort of aggressive might be the right word. But I am Pretty positive that that's possible. There is our five leaf little flower. I think for this one, we want do one flower or two flowers. I think we're just gonna do one. We'll just do the one, gets the idea across. So, from here, we do our, uh, our stems. First, I'm gonna, I am gonna come straight down from underneath this little petal, straight down to my base, which is gonna be right here. It'll have a slight curve to it. To my base right there. Then I'm gonna send this wheat all the way out that way. Now, oh, let me turn that so you guys can see. Now, one tricky thing, um, when, when lines are curved this way, I always like to be on the inside of the curve, so the natural movement of your hand is what creates that curve. But in order to do the curve on the opposite side that way, I'd have to go over here, which, yeah, I can do that. I just have to carve from the outside to the inside, so you gotta make sure, or you can pull the stroke, which makes me nervous. Maybe I'll pull it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. This one will go a little bit less curved. And now we're gonna bring this one right in. As if it cuts through that petal. Now this is the important part that we align that properly. So it looks like it goes right through there. That makes things look magic. Do the same thing here. Wait, did I? Oh no! I did exactly what I. I did exactly what I said not to do. I carved these from the opposite angle that I carved these. Oh, Mike, you dummy. 
here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna burnish these lines. Shout out Lurker James for the burnishing suggestions. I can't believe I did that. <laughs> Doesn't matter if you do it this way or this way, the knife has to go from that side or it looks different than these ones. Now I'm gonna try, oh, this is tough now. I'm gonna try to follow that burnished line exactly right from this angle. Oh no! Look what happened. I wasn't exactly right and I fully... Well, I ruined that. Oh well, it is what it is. And that line's a little boggled now, but that's okay. <laughs> Whoops. Can't believe I did that. Literally right as I was telling people to not make that mistake, I made that mistake. Okay, so there we have some stems. And now we're gonna create little, little, uh, flowers. Or not flowers. I, English is hard today. Little leaves. So I'm gonna start them here. And just slowly make them smaller and smaller. Again, I don't know if they did all of the one leaf at a time, or did them, or all one side at a time, or did each leaf at the same time. This is the way that I get the most control over it, so this is how I do it. Doing each side. Carving these little ones nice and deep but angled. So as I'm carving them, the tip is coming right off of the page on a lot of them. Oh, whoops, I made another mistake. Lots of mistakes today. I should have done the two leaves or the, yeah, the bigger leaves on the main flower stem first before I did the other stems because the other stems should have gone behind them, but it's too late for that now. So this is pretty easy, this part, this is just making little repeating curved lines, curved cuts. I make them as push cuts, but you can pull them, you can do however your knife is most comfortable and safe in your hand. 
and this is not a tutorial. <laughs> I will post a, I'll do tutorial stuff one day when I know a little bit more about what I'm doing. There we go, we got those little leaves. And like before, we can always go through there and lift all of those a little bit more. Now let's get these. Now unfortunately, I messed up, so I have to make these. I'm just gonna have one. Yeah, our big flower is just gonna have one leaf. It's gonna have to avoid. Ideally, I would have made it come around this one and this one would have gone behind it, but foresight was not a thing for me today. So, that's okay. Cut a little bit so that they can come off the page. There we go. Fill it up a bit. Yeah, we needed one on this side, but there's no space for one. Got so many lines going through here now. Can I make a rose? I probably could. I never have before. Roses are confusing flowers. They don't look, they're hard to draw even. A monstera leaf would be cool, Fozzy. Ugh. I got so many extra little st paper strings going around here because of those cuts that I messed up. Oops. This will be the last leaf on this one, and maybe we'll have time to do one more other little thing. Now I'm just gonna give this some. Doo -doo 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 -doo. Now ideally, I mean, this is a little too symmetrical. In real life, we'd have some other grasses crossing in different directions to make it look a little more natural. Kind of like that type of a situation. But that might just be ruining it. I don't know. Can we add some of these? Ta-da! <laughs> Slightly messed up flower.
but that's essentially carving. <laughs> the problem with carving these flowers that you guys are saying is I don't really know what they look like. Thank you very much, Claire. I hope to see you next year there as well. Add shopping cart. <laughs> um, I'm gonna try to carve one more thing though. I don't wanna be done quite yet. I wanna go through this PDF and see if there's anything. Like just look how much Look at the like shade he managed to get on those. I mean, that's some of that is also the lighting, but it's just so nice. Yeah, let me. There was some penman that did a lot of these like round. Yeah, there's an example of one. J.D. Carter was another one. You can't see these really great in this image. I feel like it's, wait. Mm. They would do these like, they're too perfectly, like they're perfect round petals and then they'd have cuts into them. They didn't look like real flowers, but lots of Pimmin did them. Oh, there's an example of another one. This is J.D. Carter, another series of lessons, but he would do these like, these fully cut circles. And then some of them would have petals, but he'd have these just circles cut out of the page, which is very interesting. And I'll tell you, I tried to do this, incredibly difficult to make look good without having, uh, cause what they use, their cardstock, it's glued together so it's layers. So they could literally, like they'd cut in, like he'd make the circle around, and then what's pried up is only the first left, the first layer. So they'd be able to separate. Um, unlike the paper I'm using is just kind of a thick mush together. There's not specific layers that I can just peel one layer up, uh, which is what he did here. So we had just that first layer, he was able to get under it and pull that up. This one's beautiful. Maybe I'll try this. Is that a rose? Here we go. And I'll, I'll show this photo and then I will talk as I'll read out what it says here. This is from F.A. Krupp. Uh, not one of the lessons, but just a random post in the Business Educator. This type of work is done with a sharp knife using a heavy cardboard. Uh, pasted cardboard gives the best results. So that was, it would be pasted cardboard that has layers. That's what they would use, apparently. Pasted cardboard isn't a thing anymore. It goes by a different name. I think it's essentially cereal box cardboard is sort of what they were using. Um, I think. The point of the knife should be rounded instead of a real point. I'm that might not mean rounded like my blade, that might just mean the actual point. Um, so if you just took a sharp X-Acto knife but it was rounded on the end. I haven't experimented with that yet, but a round end that sharpened would make sense. The stems are made by simply scoring the paper lightly. The leaves are cut deeper while the flowers are raised very high. A very large deep cut is necessary to raise to raise the petals of the flower. Let us see what if you can do the similar design. But that flower, like that's a not a rose so much rose, but that's I would say that's what a wild rose looks like. <laughs> um, here's a neat can't really see it all that well, but it's a page of signatures, but in the entire page is designed with cuttings, with all carvings around the whole thing. So in the top corner, 
there's a big flower up there patch or thatch work there and then like scales almost down there like and that super nice detailed flowers I like these you need really thick paper I couldn't do this I don't think um, he has two petals that aren't curled up but that are sit one on top of the other which is cool I'm actually trying to do that I don't know if I can do that I'll try I'll try so if we do one really light one and then one thicker one I mean I guess that works mine are a little long one Ah, shoot. Yeah, the edges of my knife aren't that sharp, but that kind of works. Get the two petals coming off up, the, up off the page. His are so wide. I'm pretty sure his are made by doing this, though. I haven't seen what Fozzie's saying. I just know that I saw that Fozzie's talking about QI in the chat, but I didn't see what she's talking about yet. I will look up at the chat momentarily. I just want to try to get this. Okay, so there's petal number one. I might have made that a little too thick or a little too deep. Petal number one is raised, and then we could do petal number two inside petal number one, right? Whoops, too wide. did would work if I was better with a knife. So I have to try to get a knife with a rounded point on it. I don't have any like that. So keep accidentally cutting the edges of my petals as I'm trying to manipulate them. So that kind of works. Yay! QI books and cards, Doc. When I made the, the sunflower, I did something like this. I just did a whole bunch Yeah, and the hardest part I, so often I want to like draw in like if I oh I'll just draw a circle and then I can just carve around that circle use the circle as a guide but once the paper is carved you can't really erase it so it makes it rather challenging 
Well, this won't be a sunflower, but maybe it'll be another kind of flower. And then they would paint the paper or color the paper. They dye it with ink or whatnot to give the flowers color and to add more realism to them. At least I know, pretty sure A.W. Dakin did that. issue I had with the sunflower was how many large petals there are. I couldn't get any real depth. I need a thicker paper. Oh, that works, Carolyn. Nice. Yeah, I guess I could just, I could use my sharp, yeah. I mean, I have a lot of old X-Acto knife blades that I could just dull the end and then resharpen the blade, I suppose. sunflower leaf. We're making a flower that doesn't have a name. Because I don't know what kind of flower it is. Oops, I went through. And you could also do something like, I'm assuming anyways, curve every leaf like I don't know if that shows, but how this side is down and that side is up. You could potentially curve every leaf like that and then. Oh, will this work? The next leaf comes from underneath that one. I'm doing a horrible job of it, but you see the goal and you get something, whoops, I was off. You could get essentially something like that, where then all the way around each leaf is under the previous leaf. So it would look really cool in theory. The hard part to me is working on the leaves because it's like blind. I don't know what line to actually follow. I don't have a good enough 
um, mental image of the leaf I'm trying to create. So they end up just kind of being crazy shaped. like that it would take a long time to go all the way around I'm not gonna go all the way around right now but oh no I broke it go back yeah that could be really cool adds a lot of dimension and then yeah if you have perfume that smells like flowers that would be fitting oh I forgot about my tea But essentially, that's paper carving. And then the way I was doing... <laughs> ah, rose perfume would be perfect. I'm trying to think of what else I want to do at the moment. Another thing I was messing with, see if I can find it on here. Um, when I was first experimenting, ah, oh, there it is. Oh, there's a bunch of them. You can see here, I was trying to figure out what angles to cut to get the shape of like a rope. And then you see there, multiple uh, leaves stacked on top of each other. Fern would be dope, all crazy wobbly leaves simple like something like this you can't see it that great on camera I don't think but that just star all it is is just straight cuts um, you just have to be strategic about what angle you make the cuts at but it can look really cool and then they also and I haven't seen a lot of examples of this today but there are a bunch in the business educator where is it on camera there we go my writing's not the best, but you can do writing. Ignore the ugly start of the M, but you can do some writing. Where did I get, so I got this, uh, I think I got this blade at just like a flea market. Um, there was a place there that was selling hardware store stuff, and they had just a whole selection of X-Acto knife blades. So I picked up a pack of these little rounded ones. Um, but I want to experiment with a, a round... I don't know if this is what they mean by round-ended. They might mean a regular knife, but with like a rounded tip. I'm not really sure. <laughs> you can do it, Fozzie. You should try. Christmas cards will be the dopest this way. Um, and here you can see where I was experimenting with like full-on doing like I tried to do ornamental penmanship forms and then this was my knife was always coming from below so I got to here and then when I got to this point I switched to go this way so that my shadows were always the same way obviously the line isn't very smooth I'm not sure if I liked I mean it turned out okay it just needs some refinement it's again following that path without penciling so when you pencil it you can erase but it squishes all your lines down and then it's hard to get them back up again as clean as they were the first time all right yeah this is the rounded tip they're talking about uh, I mean they're I they don't I don't think they're hard to find I was actually planning uh, when I met Iampeth to check on Amazon and see I'll just get a bunch shipped to the hotel just to have to restock up on some what else is in here? Yeah, this was just basically experiments. All of this was learning to sharpen uh, my gauges or gouges for paper. And then you can see here was another me going through the exercises that were in the book, trying to improve my skills. 
and then playing with stuff like this. The, uh, the nib that goes on the end of my signature, also cutting in underneath the top layer. So this top layer, these have all been in a filing cabinet, so they've come down. They're not as raised as they used to be. But so the top layer's there, and then just this bottom isn't really, it's not raised at all, but you just have the image of the of the pen underneath, which gives kind of a cool look. <laughs> well, you gotta be careful, Fozzie. Safety first. And this was earlier today when I was getting ready to do this live and realized I didn't remember how I did these strokes. <laughs> I was quite confident with quite a lot of them, like doing these type of pinwheel cuts and things like that, which was really fun to do. And um, easier than I had anticipated once I got the hang of it. Um, but it takes a while to get a hang of it, to get the hang of it, I guess. And then once you do, you can cut anything. And then you just try to keep doing it so you don't lose the hang of it. But I think that's going to be it for carving. Uh, sorry I wasn't as, I don't think, engaged in the chat as we usually are today. A little bit more focused than normal had to go to the page so that I didn't cut my fingers off. Um, I think next week... Uh, it might not be like a late night live. It's not going to be like this because I won't have a setup at Iampeth. I'm not bringing my big camera and all that kind of stuff traveling. But maybe we'll do something on Instagram next week. We'll do Instagram live or something from the study rooms. We'll probably do one on Tuesday, but we'll probably do multiple of them throughout the week. I'm going to try my best to document my week a little bit more than I have in the past. I'm pretty good at getting to Iapeth and just forgetting that the outside world exists. Um, but a lot of people can't go this year, so I will hopefully post some. <laughs> the only crummy part about this stuff now is when you file it away or when you put it away, inevitably, your petals get squished and stuff like that. Like my flowers and these things are gonna get squished, but that's just the way it is. If anybody in the chat's gonna be at Iampeth, I'll see you there. If you're not gonna be at Iampeth, then I won't see you there. And I will see you uh, in a while. Um, I'm gonna be on the road for a few weeks. So, like I said, I might do some stuff on Instagram, but this might be a pause in the late night lives for a little while. Um, just because, like I said, I'm not bringing my setup, and I'm not necessarily going to always be at a place. Um, <laughs> nice, Lori. I look forward to Lurker Lori in the study rooms at am. But yeah, so I don't know what's going to happen with the Late Night Lives for the next few weeks. We might be on hiatus until end of August or September. I don't know. I'll keep you posted. Uh, if you do card carving, post them up. Uh, tag me in them so I can see. Uh, or if you don't want to put them publicly, if you're just playing around with a knife, uh, jump in the Discord. Post them there. Let me see them there. Put them in, I don't know, in the lobby, I guess. I don't think they really should go in OP chat, but... Doesn't really matter. I think the Discord's been pretty quiet lately because I've been busy. I haven't really been in there. I see everything, but I haven't really been in there all that much um, because I've been busy. But something new, something random, give it a shot. Let me know if you like it. Uh, I hope you guys had fun today watching or learned something. Um, doesn't seem like anybody cut themselves, which is lovely. Uh, if you do try knifemanship or, pen ca or paper carving, be careful. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, I do hope that you are falling in love with the process 
Don't forget, as always, life should be just a bit of silliness, really. <laughs> Good night, everybody. Have a wonderful rest of your day, night, morning, week, weekend. I don't know. Whatever it is where you are. Whoa, don't hit the light. And, uh, yeah. Bye, everybody. And stream.